What's going on guys, Bel Air here. Today we are going to cover a player that I've talked about making a video on for a while, and that is Atomic with a K. Not to be confused, of course, to uh, the similar-minded player from G2 Esports. This is Europe's Atomic, Spain's Atomic, LTK Atomic, as you might know him on the pitch. Uh, and we are going to talk a little bit about uh, a player who I think, for my money, is one of the best pure strikers that the RLCS has to offer. A big reason for that is the high volume of shots that Atomic is able to get up. Uh, his 3.64 per game is 12th highest in the RLCS, which doesn't sound like much as he's going to try and redirect that uh, ball, getting a cherry pick on the other side. Definitely uh, could have put a little more mustard on that one to uh, get them on the board here against this fake GA roster from the Shift Summer League. Uh, but that 12th in shots per game is even more impressive when you realize that that's when we include Mina players, SSA players, APAC players, some of whom are just you know, freestyling out here in, in these games. Not the most um, competitive uh, regions that we have from top to bottom that is not to disparage the talent at the top, uh, but the fact that a player like ZPS, who was um, a bubble player in North America uh, as his uh, as that part of his uh, career came to a close in North America, is now going over to uh, APAC and putting up like four and a half shots per game is just preposterous. So 3.64 is a lot. When you combine that with Atomic's 68.5% uh, goal participation, you realize that we have a player who has the keys to the car, as it were, on the offensive end. And for good reason. Uh, he can strike with incredible power. Uh, he's somebody who shines in his ability to always preserve boost in the tank. Uh, he's averaging 52 uh, boost just per time. I don't really, really know how to uh, put that into words, but what I mean to say is he always has boost. Uh, more often than not, he has more than half a tank, which allows him to uh, really explode um, and put shots away, uh, not only with volume, but also with uh, pace. As this one here is going to be a double by CRR. It was fun to watch this SSL tournament because this Luna Galaxy roster uh, were kind of rotating players. It was always Atomic and Tox, uh, but then they were kind of going back and forth between CRR and um, Acronic, uh, which made for some pretty interesting uh, matchups. It, it allowed us to see, you know, uh, as with a lot of these pickup teams, what these players would look like in different combinations that we did not see over the RLCS season. And uh, we just heard recently while we're talking about uh, players and news that uh, Luna Galaxy has allowed all of their roster players to uh, explore other options. It does seem like Atomic and Tox really like playing together, so we may see that combination uh, be preserved on some other uh, roster. Uh, but Acronic is, is a player who uh, seemingly is going to uh, find another path unless hey maybe all three of them are just gonna move to a different roster together uh, but based on the results that we saw this season uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they go another direction but that context aside I think the reason that Atomic and Tox make a lot of sense is because Tox is one of those players who uh, does not need to have the ball in his hands to excel and that is a uh, really uh, uh, shifty pass there uh, by Atomic. Almost uh, put a really creative one on the hood of Tox to put away in transition. Humble was then able to get the pinch down uh, with, with the right amount of finesse there as uh, we are going to see fake GA tie things up. But Tox and Atomic make a lot of sense together because Tox is not somebody who needs to have the ball to um, excel. He is uh, somebody who is great um, with his challenge game, um, especially with uh, he excels in always um, getting a lot of uh, force on his 50s, which can create some uh, really beneficial opportunities for his teammates. He is um, excellent defensively. He is a gifted passer, uh, not necessarily the deepest bag in the world, um, which makes him a great uh, secondary threat alongside 
Atomic. Who is going to try and put away that one? Uh, is going to flip out of it, um, and they're trying to rush back here. This game has been really end to end, and we see this fake GA team put one away. Uh, let's see how Luna Galaxy respond here. Great intentionally lost kickoff there. Tox has a ton of space, tries to float one into traffic, gets broken up, but he's going to follow it. Tekaz is just going to punt this one out. Can he stay on top of this? And Atomic is, oh my goodness. This was uh, partially an excellent shot, and also I think Rizex probably thought this was going to go a little bit higher than it ended up. Maybe he was, he had full boost. That is just uh, an unfortunate one for Rizex, who probably thought that was going top crossbar and out. Uh, but Atomic is going to even us up here with 20 seconds left in this game. Ejbi on the ball. Atomic's going to pinch that one out. Not always known for excellent defense. Um, consistent defense is probably the better term uh, to use there. Sometimes he will get just a perfect catch in second touch off of his own backboard. Um, and other times he can really let them go in a way that puts his team in challenging positions. And we're going to find overtime here for this game one uh, from this Shift Summer League. Um, I believe this is the, the round 18, the, the last round. Um, and at this point, Luna Galaxy had already locked in their playoff spot, but this was just for pride here. And oh my goodness, just gonna dance on the entire defense. This is a one on three atomic, great first touch to keep it right on this hood, saves his boost, Rizex can't do anything. The bump on Ejvi and Tekaz is just too late to try and make a read there. What an impressive way for Atomic to say, give me the ball and get it out of my way. Six shots, we can see how he can uh, really keep those high averages up uh, as he was just peppering the net in this game uh, with a hat trick to go along with it. Let's flip over to game two and see if he can keep the scoring train rolling. Game two, let's take it to the beach. I think I've said this in a previous video, but I really appreciated that uh, Shift Summer League opened up the map pool quite a bit. Uh, it's always fun to, we have so many maps that we just never even uh, get to see, you know, even some classics going all the way back to uh, the golden days of, you know, the beginning of the RLCS. Like, what's the one where they're in like a train station or whatever? It's been too long. Um, if I, if you gave me a multiple choice, I'd know it right away, but uh, I'm sure somebody will let me know in the comments. As a look at the pace that we're trying to play with here, uh, this fake GA team, Rizex, uh, Tech Oz and Ejbi uh, is a pickup team, like many of them are. And I could be wrong, but I thought that uh, this fake GA team might have changed because weren't they playing with uh, Ivan instead of Ejbi? Uh, not Ivan uh, as, as we um, initially knew him back on the German Amigo days, who's now playing with Gridserve Resolve. Uh, but there's another Ivan player who, um, you know, the, in, in the same kind of way that we have two Atomics, we have two Ivans. Atomic gets up quick for this one. Great touch. He probably wanted that one to come down off of the wall as he got it over the hood of Tekaz in transition there. All right, recording crash there for a second. I hope we're back. I'm going to keep rolling with the video. I gave it a poke, a uh, peek rather, and it looks good. So uh, hopefully it is okay when we watch this back. But enough stalling. Let's get back into the game here as Atomic finds himself. Uh, this game is kind of... You know, neither team wants to make a mistake. We're finding um, a lot of challenges in the midfield. Them just trying to break the other down. Uh, just a little bit of a breather there as Atomic tries to get a strong 50. Um, hopefully to just pinch down into the box for one of his teammates to follow up on. Uh, but is going to get a backside demo here, and that is probably going to kill this attack. Uh, there's stuff like that that doesn't really show up on the stat sheet um, that I wish we had some more, you know, advanced data on, and that is a great challenge here by Atomic to uh, get his teammate Tox on the scoreboard with a layup. Ejvi just gets destroyed there. Uh, probably thought that Atomic was going to flip into that a little earlier. Um, but some of the stuff like backside demos, which are not things that we currently track, would be something I'd be really interested to see. Uh, more stats about kickoffs, uh, heat maps on where players are actually scoring, like how often is Atomic scoring in the box, and if it was a three-dimensional graph, so you could see like if they were, you know, mid-air, high air, uh, what the scoring opportunities look like, um, whether it is you know just transition layups, whether or not it is a flip reset, uh, you know, a 50, uh, 
uh, musty, uh, a bunch of stuff like that that I'm sure that the game will develop over time. There's a lot of people way smarter than me uh, who I'm sure are already interested in looking into stuff like that. But we already have three goals on here. And this fake GA team, I would not say, uh, is one who can light the scoreboard on fire. They probably want these to be closer affairs. Uh, and uh, Luna Galaxy have already made that very challenging for them here. Interesting that CRR was playing alongside this team, probably just back for the offseason, uh, you know, visiting family or whatnot. Uh, of course, before he transitioned to North America and uh, now finds himself in uh, the South American region alongside Complexity. Uh, he started off in, in, uh, in Europe uh, as, as a part of um, quite a few uh, Spanish rosters. Uh, Guild isn't necessarily a Spanish roster, but he always played with his teammate Dorito, uh, who's also Spanish. And look at this. Atomic is just going to uh, put GA into a very tough position here. Tecos is going to own goal. And... Uh, Thank God a little bit of a video to get me off of talking about uh, all the Spanish teams that CRR played on and then immediately citing Guild, one of the most uh, well-known uh, English uh, organizations that we have. Uh, it's Sunday, guys. Give me a break. 5-0. This one is over. But let's see uh, what kind of uh, slick little goals like that we can get. It's sometimes fun when you get into garbage time because then you just you know everybody starts to break out some of the some of the tricks as it were comic positioning well here he's going to rotate out when he has no boost there's a little bit of a beat he's there when he's low boost uh, but once he sees that the ball is kind of stalling in the corner a little bit uh, he says hey let me rotate out uh, and allows his teammate to um, come on in I really liked this roster when they were rocking with CRR because I think CRR offers uh, quite a bit as um, an, an off-ball uh, or even on-ball scoring threat, uh, probably more as an on-ball, not uh, somebody who's going to light the world on fire with um, his passing, although he certainly has prowess there. Uh, but the situation that he's found himself in, especially that partnership, is this one is just getting ugly. Uh, that partnership with Ray's Bull uh, has paid dividends with quite a few um, other thirds around them. Um, and that is because Ray's Bull is one of the best, the one of the preeminent passers uh, that we have. And Atomic, what is this? All right. It's, uh, it's only in garbage time that we get to see those. But uh, it was a, a beautiful display of mechanics there. Even the little scoop there, um, as, he, as he got it on the end, was able to get it over the head of Eshby, who had no idea that that was going to be happening. But uh, yeah, this, uh, this comparison, I keep sidetracking myself. Uh, this roster, this trio, as it were, um, were really fun to watch. I'm curious who we're going to see in the playoffs. Um, I think... Maybe they just keep rotating it, uh, going in between uh, a Chronic and a CRR. Uh, but I think this this uh, current roster where they're uh, kind of sharing things is uh, is uh, interesting. But if I had to have it my way, I would probably want them to roll with a Chronic, just because, um, as we said in the at the beginning of this video, all three of these players have been able to explore opportunities, and a Chronic had quite a long. Uh, you know, a bit of time in between his RLCS events that we'll talk more about as we get into game three. And uh, this one is going to find the ground close one, huh, guys? As uh, we are going to get seven goals for Luna Times Cole. Uh, Cole, come, Plexity, come. <laughs> Luna Times, come. Let's move on. We're, we're uh, losing steam here to game three for a potential closeout. All right, uh, Atomic is currently floating above. There we go. The replay fixed itself. Um, like we were saying as we were in that last game, a Chronic had quite a, a, a bit of an extended break as, uh, as he was, of course, on the uh, Team Liquid rosters that we saw do very impressive things with their young trio, uh, Oski and Atau, um, who uh, put up some very impressive results and ultimately... Uh, 
provided them excellent opportunities to move on to some of the uh, top teams that Europe has to offer this season. Uh, but Akronik was kind of um, left uh, homeless, um, orgless, as it were, there for a little bit. And uh, there's some reasons for that um, behind the scenes of uh, a destination that he could have landed in um, that uh, that uh, is, is not public, we will say, uh, but ultimately found his way onto... Um, this roster, after poking around with a couple teams here and there, he is playing with his coach, uh, ex Perry for a second, um, and, uh, and then uh, found his way onto this Luna Galaxy team, who um, were very impressive. But Akronik is somebody who spent a lot of time, um, you know, being the consummate teammate. He knew the talent that Oski and Atau were, and uh, because of that, uh, Akronik not only uh, was the first player that was always talked about as, oh man, this team needs to make a move if they want to win. Uh, you got to replace Akronik, um, somebody who came under quite a bit of scrutiny uh, for that, but I think that's something that uh, makes him even more accessible as uh, a teammate you would want to look to um, as you're as you're trying to rebuild a roster, he's somebody who is open to um, playing off ball and doing what you need him to do, uh, while also still being a very gifted scorer um, and somebody who is relied on quite a bit at the highest level as a, a defensive anchor. Also, somebody who has uh, been very impressive. Um, at the LAN events that he's been at. I think that he um, provides a spark and a lot of enthusiasm to his teammates uh, when you get onto that LAN stage. But Atomic here, somebody who is wanting to find even, oh my, oh my gosh. That was almost inc an incredible free jump uh, combination there uh, that Atomic was almost able to finish off. But Atomic, somebody who wants to find uh, even more experience uh, at lands himself, has been uh, playing at a high level since season X. I think the first team that he was kind of on uh, that was, you know, kind of uh, important, a, a household name, if you would, uh, would be those Team Queso rosters back in the day, which I think he was teaming initially with, uh, it was him and VK Salem. And uh, who is the third? Um, Dementia, I think, and uh, those teams did very well. They actually won a couple uh, tournaments in Season X back when we had some very competitive teams, even the classic BDS, the uh, extra Monkey Moon and uh, and uh, Mark by 8 rosters. Um, so uh, Atomic has been getting it done for a minute and made a couple of uh, lands, uh, at, at least I believe a couple, at least one as a part of G1. It was himself, Dorito, and Oli, if I recall correctly. Uh, and that team was competitive, but I believe they were eliminated in a round five. Um, and we're unable to um, get to the main stage. Um, but I think Atomic has probably learned from those experiences. And uh, once you rip the band aid off, uh, you know, maybe it's, it makes it uh, easier to return. You're hungry to get back, and you know that you have the ability to do so. Although I will say, I remember um, after we had uh, the long, uh, the extended break from LAN events, uh, there was a little bit of, we'll call it research done on whether or not uh, first time players, like does experience matter? Um, does having attended a LAN actually make it uh, more likely that you will excel? And I think the early returns, uh, small sample size, but uh, the answer was no. Um, so maybe the experience doesn't matter quite as much as we think, kind of how home court advantage is becoming less and less important in the NBA. Atomic going for something crazy here. What a pass. Can CR put it away? Great uh, accuracy, but just not enough power to get that pass to defense. 